Welcome back to the Portal Report Head Coach Showcase. I'm Riley Frayne, and this afternoon we have on yet another very special guest and head coach of North Dakota's men's basketball program, Paul Sather. Coach, thank you so much for coming on and giving us a bit of your time. Hey, I appreciate you having me. Of course. So just first off, Coach, you know, how are you and the staff doing at North Dakota? How are things, you know, really early into the offseason? Have you guys started workouts yet, uh, you know, with the guys on campus? Yeah, you know, we brought uh, we brought our guys in for about three and a half weeks in June, and we'll do another three weeks or so here in July. So we'll, it'll give us a chance. We'll get most of the guys for about six and a half to seven weeks throughout the summer. Okay. So undoubtedly, you know, it's been a pretty busy offseason for you and the staff. I kind of want to get right into talking about, you know, some of the newest additions on your roster. And I, I think a great place to start would be uh, with the program's first signing this offseason in Eli King, who joins from Iowa State. Uh, you know, not somebody who played a ton as a freshman with the Cyclones, but was a, a very highly re regarded uh, high school prospect. And, you know, now he's joining you at North Dakota from the Power Five level. So, Coach, you know, what excites you the most about King's addition to the program? Uh, you know, and, and what does he bring you to your program after, you know, a season spent at such an illustrious program like Iowa State? Yeah, you know, the, the great thing about a guy like Eli King is like there's two there's two sides of it, like the, the, the tangible things he brings, his abilities, you know, on the court, he's. He's a big, strong physical guard, uh, very good in transition. Um, uh, he, he's a two-way guy that he can defend. Uh, he likes to compete. Um, and, and and so I think on both sides of the floor, he's going to be someone that can be impactful for us and, and really kind of help bring some experience, even though you know he didn't play a lot as a freshman, being a part of Iowa State and playing at that level against that competition every day in practice, I think is going to really help as well. But um, I, he, he's a versatile guy. He can play multiple positions. He can play point guard, but he can also play off the ball. Um, he can guard multiple spots. So like, there's a lot of reasons to be excited, but, but then there's also the intangible things he brings. And that's just, he's an awesome young man. He shows up every day to work. Um, a lot of blue collar abilities to him. Like he doesn't mind, um, doing all the dirty work. And, and I just think that's, what's going to separate him and make him really special. Like, for us in our league and stuff, I think he's just going to have a, a great career here. Just we're really excited about having him. All right. So next up, you welcomed back 2020-21 uh, Summit League Rookie of the Year, uh, Tyree Iannaccio, you know, after two seasons uh, over at James Madison, uh, which is certainly, you know, not something you see very often in this era of college basketball and the transfer portal, you know, a returnee transfer. Uh, so, Coach, uh, you know, I'm really curious as to, you know, how the opportunity to, you know, kind of kind of pursue Ian Acho for you and your staff came about, as well as uh, what the recruitment process was like in reconnecting with him. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of what we talked about when we signed him. It's it's something where he reached out to us. You know, I think we were a little bit surprised to hear back because, like you said, it doesn't happen a lot when, you know, somebody leaves and two years later you're getting a phone call to come back. Like across the board, you don't see that a lot. So we weren't expecting it, and it was a great, it's a great phone call again. He had reached out to to, to Jamie Stevens, um, and I'd asked coaches to let him know, hey, reach out to me. Um, and then we visited and had a really honest visit, a lot honest conversation. I mean, the truth is, uh, when you're freshman of the year in a league and you're helping a team, you know, we finished fifth that year with a lot of a lot of new faces, and we were competing and playing really well late. Um, he had a good, you know, he had a good year here, and and. I think you had a good year because you're happy. Uh, and I, and I think sometimes when you, when, when, when you're a young person, you make decisions, uh, it's hard. It's hard to make You know, a lot of these young guys are making decisions now uh, since that one time transfers opened up and sometimes they're making them not really fully knowing and understanding kind of what would happen down the road, went to a really good place and they had success and he started when he was healthy, he had good success, but, um, you know, he, he, I guess he felt this is where he wanted to be and finish his career and we'll see how it plays out, but to have him for two years in our program, because he's, he, you know, as good as he was for us then, I, you know, I think he's better now because he's got a few more years of college basketball under his belt. Um, I enjoyed coaching him then and I've enjoyed coaching him this summer when we've had him here. So, uh, it, you know, it's good. It's good for us. It, maybe changes a little bit of a narrative on this portal stuff too for, for guys in your program because they have someone there they can visit with on what it's like getting in there, what's, what it's like transferring and just, you know, it's someone that was, you know, Tyree's close to home. Like, like when he's here, he's closer to home. Um, and there's an advantage sometimes you're, you're three, four hours from home and all of a sudden now you're going to a coast, you're heading way South. It might sound great, 
Uh, but when you're getting that far away from home, maybe that, uh, it, you know, for a few weeks, a few months, it might be nice. Uh, but but you're kind of losing maybe that support of your family as far as being present in there a lot. And and I think that's something that I think he's excited about as he, as he returns to us. So I think that's a nice segue kind of into the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, Coach. And, and so I think one thing you really notice uh, when you're looking at your roster is just how well of a job uh, you and the staff have done at securing, you know, local kids or being able to bring kids home who maybe grew up in and around North Dakota. I think, you know, Minnesota, as you mentioned there, uh, being a state that really pops off the page from within your roster. Uh, but I think that can be a bit surprising for some fans as well. Obviously, you know, states like North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, you know, they're not the most highly populated places in the country, but they sure can produce some under the radar basketball talent. And so again, you know, looking at your roster, you've got three freshmen coming in uh, from in-state, uh, Trayson Eagle staff uh, from Bismarck, uh, who found a lot of success last season. So for you, coach, just how strong do you think the talent is in your area of the country? And, you know, what is it like getting to recruit such an undervalued hub of basketball development? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, you know, I think we were fortunate with, you know, getting a Ryan Erickson and Anthony Doppler, who are North Dakota kids to go along with Trace. And I think getting Trace in here was important for that, too. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we, we've got a young guy here in town that's, that's walking on in Zach Kraft and I'm really excited about it. I think a lot of division twos maybe missed out on him and I'm excited about his development. And then, you know, he rounded out with Matthew, uh, Boffin, who's from St. Francis, who's, who's coming this first year as a walk-on, but will will receive a scholarship after that. And, and, uh, I, I just, I, I think you've got to be able to sustain and have those regional kids that are really and understand maybe where you're at, where you're living, the weather, um, and 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 used to it in a sense that, like sometimes when people experience some, some winters for the first time, they don't they don't always love it. Um, you know what you find out is whether you're 300 miles south of here or, or here, you you don't spend a lot of time outside in the winter time anyhow. You're more in a gym. You know I always tell people when you're when you're at a place like ours, people still gather, still want to get together and. I think there's an awesome opportunity to support and gather our teams at our university at the University of North Dakota, just because like we don't have oceans, we don't have beaches, we don't have a lot of that stuff in the winter time. So, you know, getting regional guys is important. We want to always keep that important um, and continue to do it. But you've also got to be able to reach out and, and get some kids that maybe just aren't in your area, but can still be impactful and still be a great fit here at the University of North Dakota and in Grand Forks in this community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of rounding out the transfer grouping here, uh, on, I know on top of that, you added a pair of Jugo big men as well in Amar uh, Kaj Kajulovic uh, from, Land, uh, from, Lake, Land. from Lakeland College, yeah. <laughs> as well as uh, Deng uh, Mayar from Howard College. And one thing I, I like to ask coaches on the shows who are kind of active in Juco recruiting is about, you know, the inter intricacies of recruiting and building connections at that level. So with those two additions in particular, uh, again, you know, what was the recruitment process like for you, coach? How, and how do you go about finding the right fit for your program, you know, and really like a sea of exciting JUCO talent? Well, I think your staff has a lot to do with those relationships and building those relationships as well. I mean, a guy like uh, Dang Mayer, uh, Esteban Sandoval coached him while he was at junior college, uh, at a junior college and got to know him there. Um, that was a few years ago. And then uh, a guy like Randall Herbst has also been down to watch him and build relationships with Coach Cooper and Coach uh, uh, Sandoval knows Coach Cooper as well, pretty well. So those guys really kind of led that recruitment of Dang. Um, Coach Stevens was able to see Amar at, a, at the Junior College National Tournament and right away got a, uh, a relationship building with him. And, uh, you, you know, I think two guys that can be impactful for us, Dang, Dang kind of had a four with abilities to kind of play a three as well. But it allows us to play a guy like B.J. Omad a little bit more at a wing uh, with Dang, and that brings a lot of length and athleticism with those two guys on the floor together. Um, someone like Amar, who, who has the physicality of being a five-man, uh, but a skill set and kind of a feel for playing some four as well. So it allows us to maybe play a little bit bigger uh, physically when, when we see some teams that maybe play two bigs more and we need some depth and some foul, you know, with foul trouble. Um, you know, Amar is a guy that we feel can play some four along with T or even a guy like Brian Matthews he can be in the floor with. But will allow us to play some five and uh, as well with his skill set. So, like, you know, I think they both 
they, they both are different players. Uh, they both really good fit for how we play and what we're looking for. And we're excited about both of those guys. All right, coach. So we touched on, you know, a lot of your roster, a lot of your roster development today and, you know, some of the exciting names who have no doubt already joined this off season. So I, I want to take a quick opportunity before we sign off here to, to look ahead to next season, which really isn't too far away if you think about it. But uh, between some really exciting transfers and, and incoming local freshmen, a couple of new, or a new piece on, the, on your staff as well, uh, your personal contract extension, uh, you know, as head coach at North Dakota, just a couple months back, uh, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of buzz around your program at the moment as a rebound contender in the Summit League next year. Uh, so, coach, I just want to ask, you know, what's your message to the fans and the UD, UND community, uh, you know, ahead of the 2023-24 campaign? Well, I think we've got a lot to be excited about. I think from our guys' standpoint, they got to realize we haven't done anything yet, right? I think we got to kind of keep that workman type mentality, bring our hard hats and and decide that, you know, this is really hard. Like like everything, when you're having expectations and uh, there's some opportunity to, to make a jump with your program, um, like it just doesn't happen easily. Uh, it doesn't happen without a lot of work. Like we got to dig in, we got to really work at this. And, and it's going to come from our guys. I mean, as a coach, sometimes you get a lot of credit when things are going well and things aren't going well. You get a lot of credit. But the truth of the matter is, like, uh, as things are going really well, a lot of it becomes uh, because your players really are buying into each other. They're, they're taking ownership in the team and in the program. And they're taking a lot of pride in the day-to-day -day work that we're doing and how they're doing it and the kind of teammate they are. And And – you know, not only trying to, to get better themselves, but to push their, the, you know, each other and push their teammates to, to be better and, and just not allowing slippage, not allowing less um, and, and really working for it. And like we got a lot of uh, work in front of us and it starts this summer getting to know each other. You know, it's hard. It's a long year. So you don't want to just kill guys in the summer with hard, hard workouts and a ton of 5v5 stuff, but you got to do some. And and uh, so we're kind of we're kind of in the middle of, of, of the summer grind and coming out of the fourth. What you find is that they've, they've had a little time off and, you know, we want to get back in shape somewhat and get ourselves ready for this fall. Because when they get back on campus, this fall is when the real the actual real work begins. And and uh, like I said, just just can't get can't get too locked in on what uh, a December, January, February might look like. You got to get locked into every day just focus on, on improvement and getting better all right there you have it lots of development being done in north dakota this off season and i think lots of lots to look forward to ahead next season thank you so much again for joining us coach paul sather north dakota men's basketball appreciate it, man thank you all right